has been two years since the first After Effects podcast. Arming a team of animators around the world with the skills needed to complete their work. Creative Cal leader Aron Rabinowitz prepares his troops to do battle with the forces of corporate, broadcast, and web video. At the same time across the country at Creative Cow Headquarters, Commander Lin Boom and Princess Kathleen, with the help of their furry sidekick Cow Dog, work behind the scenes to help the Cow Alliance in its next strike against the lack of hardware and software knowledge. Tirelessly, Tech Sergeants Eric and Abraham work against high traffic to keep the CreativeCow.net website up and running at peak performance. Meanwhile, back in Massachusetts, Captain Tim Calrissian and Nora Jade construct a plan that will help distribute important industry information via magazine, newsletter, and DVD. But unbeknownst to our heroes, the merciless forces of Father Time work against them all. Oh man, that was super crazy cheesy. But please forgive Sonny Garcia, voiceover artist extraordinaire, who was kind enough to record it for me. He didn't write that stuff, I did, so please throw the tomatoes my way. Yeah. It is the two-year anniversary episode of the Creative Cow After Effects podcast, and I am your host, Aaron Rabinowitz. And yeah, it's really been longer than two years. I wasn't paying attention to the calendar. You know, the traffic was bad, and there was stuff going on at work, and I got caught up. Honey, I'm sorry I forgot our anniversary, but... I will make it up to you by giving you this fabulous tutorial. Hey, don't look at me that way. It's not like you got me anything, okay? Now, in this episode, I'm going to be returning to my roots. Oh, yes, I have roots. And we'll be using some of the techniques found in one of my earliest tutorials, creating the TV look. If you haven't watched that one, please do so. That way, I don't have to re-explain a lot of what I'm doing here. Hey, I'm entitled to a little laziness now and then, don't you think? In this tutorial, we're going to create the hologram effect so often seen in both good and bad science fiction movies. So here I am in After Effects with some footage of a woman. This footage comes with Adobe Ultra, in case you were wondering. And as you can see, she's already been keyed out. Now, I'm not going to cover keying here because it's been covered in some previous podcasts. Uh, check out the After Effects podcast called Basic Color Keying by Andrew Kramer, and then one of mine called Super Tight Junk Mats. I've pre-comped the keyed footage so that it's easier for me to work with, but depending on your project and footage, you may not need to. With the footage selected, I'll choose Effect, Color Correction, CC Toner, which allows us to create a tritone effect based on luminance. It's a great tool for creating a sepia look. In the Effects panel, I'll click on the color swatch for midtones, and I'll set it to a bluish color with red set to 70, green set to 140, and blue set to 210. Obviously, you should feel free to use whatever color you want. I'll click OK to confirm the color. As you can see, our actress is now looking a little blue. Oh, so sad. Next, I'll create a new solid layer by choosing Layer, New, Solid. And in the Solid settings, I'll name the solid Line. And then I'll go into the color settings and I'll set its color to black. Then back in the solid dialog, I'll make sure it's set to the same size as the composition. And then I'll click OK to confirm the creation of the new black solid. Next, I'll add a mask by selecting the rectangular mask tool and drag clicking it across the black solid. Once that's done, I'll hit F to reveal the mask's feather property, and in the timeline, I'll turn off constrained proportions for the mask feathering. Then, I'll set the Y feathering to 5. Next, I'll animate the position of the solid layer going from the bottom to the top of the screen. So, at frame 0 in the timeline, I'll move the line layer to the bottom of the screen, and then I'll hit P to reveal the position property. Then. I'll add a keyframe by clicking on the position properties stopwatch. Next, I'll move down to the last frame of my video, about 4 seconds, and I'll move the line layer all the way up to the top of the composition. Now, over about 4 seconds, the line moves up the screen. Obviously, you can adjust the speed, and of course, if you watch the original TV tutorial, you know that you can loop the motion of the line so that it repeats over and over. I don't need to do that in this tutorial, but you might in your project. Next, I'm going to animate the line layer's opacity. 
hit T to reveal the opacity and at frame 0 set the opacity to 25% and then click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Then move down one frame in time and set the opacity to 0. Then move down in time one more frame and set it back to 25. This will make the line blink off and then on, but it only does it once. But we can change that with an expression. Let's quickly loop the animation by alt clicking on the opacity stopwatch or option clicking if you're on a Mac, which creates a blank expression. And then let's change that expression to read the following. Loop out open parentheses type equals open quotes cycle close quotes close parentheses. A quick RAM preview and I can see the line moving up the screen and blinking. Okay, let's duplicate this line layer by selecting it in the timeline and then choosing Control D or Command D if you're on a Macintosh. Then I'll select the duplicate layer and at the first frame in the timeline I'll move it to the top of the screen. Then I'll jump to the end of the timeline and I'll move the line layer halfway down the screen. Normally, I wouldn't want this to stop in the middle of the screen, but in this case, I want this line to move at half the speed of the original line. And in this animation, that brings it to the middle of the screen. If you're running a longer animation and you're having the line cycle its position over and over again, you'll want to animate the line going all the way to the bottom over twice the amount of time as the first one. So in this case, it would be about 8 seconds. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that here. The math involved ain't exactly rocket surgery, if you know what I'm saying. Next, I'll make the duplicate layer's mask a little bit bigger. Double click on any single point on the mask and then using the mask transform bounding box, adjust the shape. Then, when you're done with that, hit T to reveal the opacity. Then in the timeline, select the first and third keyframes for opacity and double click on either of them. Then in the opacity dialog, set the opacity to 15% instead of 25. This kills two birds with one stone by setting the opacity value for both of the selected keyframes. Okay, a quick RAM preview and we can see that the lines are working together in blissful harmony. But wait, all is not as it appears. If I activate my toggle transparency grid button, I can see that the lines extend past the dimensions of our footage. Obviously not a good way to go. So let's fix this. Duplicate the keyed footage layer and move it to the top of the stack order. Then let's solo the layer by clicking on the layer's solo switch. Next, let's add the grid effect by choosing Effect Generate Grid. Then in the effects panel, at the bottom of the effect, set the blending mode to stencil alpha, which makes the grid the source of the layer's transparency. Then back near the top, set the effect to get the size from the width and height slider. Set the width to 1000. Set the height to 3. Set the border to 4. Twirl down the feather property and set the feather height to 2. Finally, to get rid of the line going down the middle, set the anchor X value to 1000. Now again, I'm not explaining what each of these features does because I covered that in the TV tutorial. Next, let's add some opacity keyframes. Move to the first frame in the timeline and then hit T to reveal the opacity. Then click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe with the current value of 100%. Then move down one frame and set it to 85%. Then move down one more frame and set it back to 100. I'm going to select all of the keyframes and I'll right click on any one of them and from the pop-up I'll choose toggle hold keyframe. You might not think that we'd need to do this since the value changes at every frame and that means that there's nothing in between each keyframe. But we're going to be playing with the frame rate in a little bit, which means that the keyframes will no longer line up to each frame, meaning that it could end up creating interim values, which I don't want. I want it to be either 100% or 85% opaque and nothing in between. And of course, we'll loop the animation again by alt clicking on the stopwatch and adding the same looping expression that we've been using. Next, let's turn off the layers solo switch and bring back the rest of the layers. Then set the layers blending mode 
from normal to stencil alpha, which makes every layer below it get its transparency from this layer, kind of like a super matte. If we activate the show transparency grid button, we can see that our lines are no longer extending past the dimension of the keyed footage. Finally, to complete the construction of this hologram, I'm going to add in some noise. You know, because in the future, even though they have really advanced holographic technology, hollow phone reception still kind of sucks. Can you see me now? Good. Okay, to do that, let's choose Layer, New, Solid. In the Solid settings, I'll name it Noise. And then in the Color Picker, I'll set it to Absolute Gray, which means that the red, green, and blue values are all set to 128 right and then I'll click OK to get out of the color picker I'll make sure to set the layer to be the same size as the composition and then I'll click OK to confirm the creation of the new solid next I'll move the noise layer below our stencil this blocks out the other footage but don't worry it's only temporary next with the noise layer selected choose effect noise and grain noise in the effects panel, for noise type, uncheck Use Color Noise. Then set the amount of noise property up to 50%. I always find that the noise effect generates noise that's too small. So I'll hit S to reveal the noise layer's scale property, and I'll set the scale up to 400%. Then I'll hit T to reveal the layer's opacity, and I'll set the noise layer's opacity down to 10%. Finally, I'll set the noise layer's transfer mode to overlay so that it mixes with the original footage. One last thing here. I'll choose Composition, Composition Settings, and in the Composition Settings, I'll set the frame rate to 19 frames per second. I am deliberately creating a frame rate that doesn't match the footage well so that I can help sell the effect of bad reception or transmission. Also, I'll go into the Advanced tab and I'll turn on the option called Preserve Frame Rate when nested or in Render Queue, which sets things up so that no matter what I do, After Effects will always use this frame rate for this composition. Normally, when nested, After Effects ignores the original frame rate in favor of the current composition's frame rate, which can cause all sorts of problems. So this is a great tip that can be used in a lot of other places, not just in this tutorial. Click OK to get out of the dialog, and we're done constructing our hologram. Now let's do some compositing, which is pretty simple stuff. Let's switch over to our main composition, where I have a picture of my desk. In the project panel, let's take our hologram composition and drop it into the main composition. Then, let's duplicate the layer twice. We're going to play with the transfer modes a bit. Set the top hologram layer to have the add transfer mode. Set the middle one to have the hard light transfer mode. And finally, set the bottom one to have the screen transfer mode. And with that bottom hologram layer selected, choose Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Blur. Then in the Effects dialog, set the blurriness up to 16. And there you go. A quick RAM preview and you can see that we have the hologram look that everyone has ripped off of Star Wars. Important to note that this looks best when used over a darker background. And of course, all of the settings, including transfer modes, are going to depend on your project. Happy anniversary, everyone. And of course, congratulations to the team at Creative Cow for all of the hard work over the last year in publishing the Creative Cow magazine, updating the website, and of course, all of the new Jedi Master... I mean, Creative Cow Master Series DVDs, which you can find at training.creativecow.net. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.